Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chair of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, Secretary Jacob Liu. Good evening uh, to all of our guests, uh, Ambassador Chin and Ambassador Nick Raponte, Secretaries Chow and Locke, Admiral Davidson, Consul General Huang, distinguished guests and friends of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our 2021 gala dinner, and what a delight it is to be able to gather in person to support the committee's vital work. This is my first gala as chair, and I'd like to take a moment to recognize my predecessor, Ambassador Carla Hills. Following a path-breaking career in public service, Ambassador Hills has given two decades of remarkable service to this organization, and that service continues. We thank you for your unwavering commitment and leadership, and please join me in a rousing welcome and thank you. I also want to express my gratitude to Ming Xia our honoree this evening, whose generosity sets an outstanding example and whose story is an inspiration. I'm likewise deeply thankful to our donors at the chair level and above, the Star Foundation, Fulgen Genetics, Citadel Securities, Dalio Philanthropies, Ex-Coal Energy and Resources, BlackRock, Chubb, Perfect World, PX Global Advisors, Teng Yue Partners, Tishman Spire Properties, and Wangshang America Corporation, as well as all of our other sponsors and members of our gala committee who are listed in your program. <laughs> At a time of enduring tension in U.S.-China relations, your leadership and commitment to building mutual understanding and exchanges at all levels provides continued hope that the relationship will grow more stable and productive. Finally, please join me in thanking our President Steve Orleans, our tireless Vice President Jan Barris, our gala team of Yang Lu, Ushin Hinehan, Alexander Guido, Zachary Zulionis, and Garwood events, as well as the rest of the dedicated staff of the National Committee. As we gather tonight, uh, the U.S.-China relationship is at a dangerous point, creating risks to both of our nations and the broader world. Escalating hostility may well play, play well politically in both of our countries, but it cannot be allowed to lead to either a full economic decoupling or even worse, to outright conflict. The world depends on its two largest economies, the US and China, to both grow at a healthy rate. Each faces pandemic-related interruptions as well as longer-term structural challenges. Acting in our respective national interests and defending our values lies at the heart of international engagement. But expanding barriers to trade and investment are increasing domestic economic challenges in our two economies and risk spillovers that could impede global growth. Stabilizing the relationship must be a shared priority and responsibility. That does not mean tolerating the economic or strategic status quo. It means engaging bilaterally and multilaterally to manage competition and to address shared transnational problems and to protect our values and national security interests. It means seeking a more predictable relationship, and that begins with increased communication. I'm encouraged by an increased pace of government-to-government -government talks and hope that will grow in frequency and the plans for the upcoming video between our two presidents is a promising development. We also know that track two dialogues, like those that the committee facilitates, can provide space for candid discussion. In particular, 
there's a vital role for those in the private sector, including many in this room, to build ties and help create a political climate in which progress is possible. And as we celebrate the contributions of those who immigrated to the United States, we must also recognize how important connections of family and culture can be to fostering understanding. Chinese American immigrants play a crucial role in keeping ties between our two nations strong. An early history of maltreatment and exclusion is a dark past. Recent incidents of anti-Asian violence are very troubling. But the overarching story is one of progress in which Chinese American immigrants have made foundational contributions to US society and become an integral part of our national fabric. As we celebrate that journey this evening, who is better to honor than Ming Xie, a Chinese American immigrant who rose to become a leading innovator, entrepreneur, and philanthropist in his adopted home? 